Howdy, neighbor. Mills. Welcome 3D Archer, Greg here. All right, the history of the Ben Pearson cult. All right, been wait, working on this one for a while now. Um, it's really hard. Sources are drying up all over the place. Most of my information I based off of personal knowledge, catalogs, and some people I talked to. Um, let's talk about this bow, all right? I have to say, it's my favorite bow in the world. I love the Ben Pearson cult. Multiple reasons, some sentimental. It's also the first bow I've ever shot. As a matter of fact, this is the first bow I ever shot. This is my dad's. Um, it's a 1967 Ben Pearson coat, very unique. We'll get in that later in the video. Quick story, went out, it's like nine years old. It's probably <clears throat> 1971, 72, in that range. And there's that big moment as a kid. I gotta go out fishing with my dad and my uncles. I moved up in the world. I was becoming that man and stuff, and uh, it was a big thing for us back out back home in Illinois. So we went out fishing. I remember we walked down this railroad track, good mile, or probably 500 yards. <laughs> but as a kid, it was a mile, and uh, found this little lake or pond, whatever you want to call it. Everybody threw out the reels, except for my uncle Pete. He had a bow. He was bow fishing, and I, you know, being a kid, I was fascinated by it. Like, dad, bugging my dad, Dad, what? What's Uncle Pete doing? What's Uncle Pete doing? I was into that, huh? Yeah, he goes, all right, don't worry about it. Came home, broke this out, showed me how to shoot it. So that's how I got started in traditional archery. That's all I know. And that could be the reason, one of the reasons why I love this bow. I had that sentimental attachment to it. You know, I have to say this bow, or any Ben Pearson in general, is some of the most underappreciated bows ever. You know, everybody loved bears and all this. And I, I understand that, but I love how they put down Ben Pearson's. Cause, <laughs> I don't know what they're basing their stuff on. Their experience has been so different than mine. Um, I have to say, Ben Pearson bow, right? The Colt was made from 1959 to 1975. Um, it was one of their top sellers throughout that whole period and one of their longest selling bows. It was only outlasted by the Collegian, which came started in 1957, ended in 77, but made a comeback in 1980 as a metal riser bow. And it was only outsold and outlasted by the Cougar, which ran from 1957 to 1984. No design changes or anything. And finally, it was beat, stomped on by all of them. The most popular bows by Ben Pearson were the Jet Bows. And they sold from 1957 up to 1989. As far as I can track them, I don't have the catalogs after 89 because I never really was caring about that stuff. So that's a long time. So in this video, we're gonna cover the different, I call it generations, right? The designs, I'm gonna talk about them, I'll shoot a couple of them, I'll show you pictures of them, give you some fun facts, some different information on it. So kick back and enjoy. Quite possibly the most complete history you're gonna find on YouTube, because it's the only one, about the Ben Pearson Colt. The story of the Ben Pearson Colt starts in 1959. It was a bow designed by Ben Pearson himself. Now the Generation 1 only lasted one year because by 1960 they started making massive changes to the designs of the bows. It's part of that evolution of archery. The Colt was marketed as a bow designed for novices and teens. An ideal introductory bow without equal for dependable performance. Now an interesting fact is all left-handed bows had to be special ordered. They charged an extra $5 and it took 60 days to make delivery. Now the 1959 bow is probably one of the most sought after bows by Ben Pearson due to a unique design feature. The grip part of the riser is not vertical, it's offset, it's slightly angled in. Something he tried and played with, I don't know if it worked well or not, I never shot one of these, I've actually only seen one of them. 
And the other way you can tell 1959 is by the leather wrap on the handle. So there you have it, some quick information. So what we're going to do next, I'm going to let you look at the page of it, and I'll show you some pictures of a pristine example of one of these that I found. Nineteen fifty-nine is model number nine six zero. The length was sixty inches. The bow weighed two pounds. Came in draw weights from twenty to forty pounds at twenty-six inches. Did not have a draw limit, at least it wasn't listed. The brace height is six point five to seven point five inches. Now they didn't specify the wood, but the features, as they listed in the catalog, are glass-powered limbs of a semi-recurved design. Limbs are normally white. Full sight window providing a center shot release. Offset and angled handle section. Leather wrap grip with a Dacron string. Nineteen sixty brings out a new design. The bow loses the leather wrap and the angled riser. But what it does gain is something Ben Pearson bows are known for. And that's the multi-wood risers. You can see here. You can see all the different woods in there. Um, they love this. Some of his, like the Pinto, uses four or five different types. This looks like a walnut and oak right here. The big thing in these bows is the 26-inch draw length. You know, and you can see from the size, I don't have big hands, but look, I could crush my hand right around it. These are definitely youth and beginner bows. We say that, then look at the draw weight. 40 pounds at 26 inches. You know, even for that said, this is a sweet shooting bow. I feel nothing with it. Um, doesn't put them out the fastest, but then again, I think it's a beginner's bow. And that's what this was made for. The Colts have always been economy-based bows. All right, let's take a look at the catalogs and see what the Colt looked like through the four years of the Generation 2 run. Finding the poundage on your Ben Pearson bow is pretty simple. Like any other bow, it's written on the riser by hand. But what Ben Pearson did is made it in five pound increments. So it's 30, 35, 40, 45. But bows don't come like that. So what they did is they use an X. And you'll see from the pictures here, they'll be scrolling by. These are different examples. If you have an X before the poundage number, that tells you to subtract one pound. So if it's X35, it's a 34 pound bow. If it's an XX35, it's a 33-pound bow. And then it's just the opposite. If the X's are after it, you add a pound. So if it's 35X, that's 36 pounds. If it's 35XX, that's 37 pounds. Now, if you're looking to restore them, what you can do is real simple. is You take the strike plate off, and they took a stamp, and they stamped the actual poundage on the riser using a stamp. So if you're restoring it and you take it off and there's no stamp there, that's telling you that bow's already been restored because most people already sanded it off and got rid of it. So there you have it. That's how you tell the poundage of your Ben Pearson bows. Nineteen sixty one brought no changes in the design. The retail price was twenty two dollars and fifty cents. Fun fact is the left handed bow is still a special order, but there's no extra charge and now delivery is down to just two weeks. Nineteen sixty two again no changes in the design. The breakdown of the draw weights available is now 20, 25, 30, 35, and 40 pounds. 
The retail price is still $22.50, but the wholesale price is $10.13. So what you find in the catalogs, is that always just what you get? No, there's so much variance out there. I've seen so many bows that have options that weren't listed in the catalogs. Or they did things that just didn't jive with the catalogs. And the perfect example of that is the rule about the Pearson fiberglass. Bows 40 pounds and under had white fiberglass. 40 pounds and above had brown. Remember this bow I did in the beginning? This is my father's Ben Pearson coat, dated in 1967, in which the rules in the catalog state that. Well, I'm going to have to bring you in really close. This is my limbsations on it. It has white limbs. Right? The fiberglass is white on both sides. So that tells you it's under 40 pounds, right? This is a 46-pound bow. That should have been a brown set of limbs interesting stuff now you'll also see things like this my 1965 green and red limbs but here's a picture of a 1967 with green limbs right now oak they never offered the bow except for 65 the i-beam and oak but pure oak but I had one. I owned one. I gave it to Andre in Germany. And here's a picture of another one made of oak, not listed in the catalogs. Now I can come up with two reasons for this. One is Ben Pearson did not waste anything. All right. If he had enough scrap wood, he'd make a bow out of it and sell it. He let nothing go to waste. Three part construction three-part construction. My others are two parts. They cut out the center. Why? A little less work. Saves a little time. Ben Pearson was always looking to save time and money. And the other reason I think there's such great variance is special orders. He would make a bow any way you want it. So you called up in 1967 or wrote him in 1967 and said, hey, I want a Ben Pearson coat with oak riser and red and green limbs. And Ben Pearson said, on its way. So there's two reasons. So when you look at a coat and you see, hey, that doesn't match the catalog, it's still a coat, but makes them a little bit more collectible. All right, little fun fact for you to know about the variances in the Ben Pearson coats. But I wanna talk about production standards. This is a 65 Ben Pearson Colt. This is a 67 Ben Pearson Colt. As you can see, they're, they're, the dimensions, everything, they're very similar. The thickness is identical. Good consistency there, right? Here is my other 67. Right. This is one of my favorites, made out of Brazilian hardwood. Again, everything is so similar and identical. Right? But, here comes the one to throw you all off. My father's, the first bow I ever shot. This bow is way out of whack. Why? The riser is not nearly as thick. The handle, the grip part, has a totally different angle. This is a right-handed bow. This is right hand of both. See the thumb rest? It's like a rounded one. It's not cut off sharp. See the sharpness in that one? Look at that one. Any of the difference? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they had a newbie build this one and asked my daddy ever modified it. He goes, no, that's how I bought it for the store. So that's a really unusual Ben Pearson Colt. Don't know why. Maybe somebody screwed up. You know what? And they ain't going to throw the bow away. It's not a signal. It's nothing else. That was a straight Ben Pearson. Nineteen sixty-three. There's no changes in design, and this is the first time in the catalogs that it mentions a draw length of twenty-eight inches instead of the previous 
26. Nineteen sixty-four, the start of the Gen Three, right? Very unique design. You can see it's a transition moving from the longbow to the recurve that we know. You know, and that's just following the trend in archery itself. This is also the first time in the catalogs that it's listed as a economy laminated bow. Now, here's the description of it, and you can see they're marketing it to a totally different group. Remember, before it was for youth and novices. Well, now the coat, nineteen sixty-four is marketed to women from the catalog. It says, a popular companion bow to the cougar for the perfect his and hers bow combination. Interesting, right? They're actually saying it's a bow for women. All right, I don't have one of these. I bid on it, lost on it, but I'm gonna run through some pictures for it to show you it. Very unique design, right? You can see a lot's going on on it, how they're changing it from the traditional longbow grip into the slight pistol grip. So let's take a look quickly at the one year only Generation 3 bow. Nineteen sixty four. He went with a new model number of seven zero four. The length of the bow grew two inches to sixty two inches, gained a pound of weight up to three. The draw weights you could order from twenty to fifty five pounds at twenty eight inches. Has a listed draw limit of twenty eight inches. Its brace height is six point five to seven point five. The wood is white holly and walnut. Now it doesn't say that in the catalog, but the sixty four catalog's unique because we have all these hand notations on it, and that's where they tell about the types of woods. And the catalog lists the features. Contrasting colored hardwood laminates in the handle, riser and sight window with a tapered overdraw. Comes with a custom bow spring and a modified pistol grip. It wholesaled for $13.50 and retailed for $32.50. And in the 64 catalog, the beautiful thing is it shows you the sales numbers. From January to May of 1964, they sold 2,226 of these bows. This is the first year the catalog list prices. You know, it's a pretty rare coat because it was only made for one year. Nineteen sixty-five brings out the final version, the Generation Four. This one here lasted 10 years and was probably their best selling bow while it lasted. As you can see, it's an all new design. So if you look at the three together, the four together, starts as a long bow, stays a long bow, comes a semi recurve and finally morphs into the famous recurve we all know. Um, in the catalog, they're again listed under um, economy laminated bows. But now it's called a little different. Their big line is it's the biggest bargain in the Ben Pearson line. All right? And they're now calling them hunting and target bows. Um, 1965 models are easy to identify because it's the only year they offered the two wood things. They call this I-beam construction with the holly and the white oak. And 1965 is also the only year that they use red and green um, fiberglass as the standard colors. Now, 1965 in the catalog says all left-handed bows are custom made and it's down to a two-week delivery. 1965. Model number is now 707. It's still 62 inch bow, still weighs three pounds. Draw weights are the same from 20 to 55 at 28 inches. Has a draw limit of 28 inches. Their brace heights are the same, 6.5 to 7.5. Has a 6.5 inch sight window, the first time they actually mention how big the sight window is. The wood, white holly and walnut woods. Now the catalog says, walnut handle with white holly window beam. Internal stabilizers, hunting target. Biggest bargain in the Ben Pearson line. Short, full, working, recurve limbs, semi-pistol grip, 
tapered overdraw fitted with a 638 Dacron string. Now, this is pretty neat. They actually say this. That it tells you the bow will increase and decrease 2 pounds for every inch over 28 inches. Retail price is $32.50. The colors of the limbs, you know, they don't call them fiberglass, they call it piercing glass. All right, <laughs> whatever. Um, the most common color was white, followed by brown. And those are used the longest and the most. But then for 65, like my 65 here, they came in red in the front and green in the back. I call it my Christmas bow. But they also offered it in like a gold color and like a mustard color. And then finally, the last two years of production, the limbs are offered in black. So you can really tell by the colors, you can also help you date your bow. You know if it's red and green, it's probably a 65 unless it's special ordered. And if it's black, it's 73 and 75. So there you have it, boys and girls. Different colors used in the Ben Pearson Colts. 1966. The limbs are now white for under 40 pounds and brown for over 40 says it has a Teflon arrow rest is now included with the bow and this is the first time they mention a thumb rest on the riser. All left-handed bows are special ordered and takes two weeks for delivery. The cost takes a slight bump up to $35. Alright everybody I talked a little bit about the wood and the variances and you know there's a massive variance of them but to me, why I love wooden bows is that's what gives a bow a character. You know, it's character. Um, the different wood grains like that. I just love wood. Not the best woodworker. I love doing it. Built my own bows, but um, didn't do it. So, let's talk about it. Here's one bow. 63. I think it's a walnut. You guys could tell me, you know, if you're an expert, you know better. I don't know my wood types. I never really paid much attention to it. And here's my 65. On 65, this is called holly and oak. I don't know. It looks like the same type of wood to me. All right, this is darker, though. Definitely darker than this one. So they use that. So you can find that throughout times. Now I'm going to show you three bows of mine from 1967. And you're going to find an interesting part about this. We're going to talk about bow construction for a second. Deviate off. I-beam construction. Remember we talked about that? Three pieces. 65. Here's my father's 67, Ola Handel. It wasn't this red, I used a little stain to bring out the red in it, it made it pop a little bit more. But the thing you can tell, three piece, right? There's three pieces, you can see it on the front. Three sections of wood, 1965, correct? All right, then they made bows like this, which is the most beautiful bow wood I've ever seen. I believe it's Brazilian rosewood or some form of rosewood. I mean, just look at the, oh, that stuff, I just love it. And let me tell you, this wood is so much heavier than any other wood. This, this is a heavy bow for its size. The others are feather light. Now, thing on this bow, which I forgot to tell you, look at it. Two pieces. Two pieces of wood, right? And then we come to my favorite bow, Fudge. Named it Fudge because it's all brown. That looks like a mixture of Ola, Walnut, or something. See how it's light on this side? Now it's dark on this side. Don't mind all the gunk in here. That's from shooting in nasty weather. All right, again, two-piece construction. All right, there is no I-beam. It's two-piece construction. So they did that all the time. Interesting stuff. You're going to see a great variety, and you've seen the pictures of the yoke one before, right? On the variances. So that is something unique. 1967. The Colt is now marketed as an all-purpose laminated bow. There's no changes to it. There's no mentions of the types of wood. And now the left hand is a special order with a four-week delivery. And now $5 boost in price up to 40 1967 was the high water mark for Ben Pearson bows. They were selling tons of them at this time, and at this time, they were the world's largest archery manufacturer and distributor and seller. Now, 
1968, Ben Pearson retired, sold the company to a group called the Leisure Group Incorporated. The time that he sold it, Ben Pearson Archery was the world's largest manufacturer of archery equipment, arrows, bows, and its largest distributor. Sold more than any other company on the planet at the time. The man had the market. Now the new group called the Leisure Group Inc. was out of California. Now I've heard sources tell me, and I can't confirm it, the original Ben Pearson was located in Pine Buff, Arkansas. When the Leisure Group bought it, they transferred all manufacturing out to California. It might be true. But that was a big one. That was the big shock. Ben retired. The company was no longer in his hands. It now belonged to the Leisure Group. 1968. The bow is now marketed as a bow for everyone. The model number changed from 707 to 7070. They also added a little decal to the riser and they now say it has a built-in ballast point. It says the sight window is now center shot and they went back to saying it has a solid Ola handle. <laughs> the best part is but the one in the picture it's laminated two piece. The draw length is now 26 to 30 inches and the cost went up again to $40 a bow. Nineteen sixty nine. With new owners comes new ideals and new bows. In nineteen sixty nine, Ben Pearson was gone. The new owners introduced a slew of new bows. In the hunting category, you had the Mercury Hunter with a unique Mercury dampening system. You had the BPH thirty, BPH fifty two, BPH seventy, and BPH ninety. And you also had the Deer Slayer. For the target bows, you had the Lord Mercury and the Lord Sovereign. And in the fiberglass, they came out with a 3360, a 52-inch hunting fiberglass bow. So with the Colt, the catalog mentions it as being one of their most popular models. But with all these new ones, you can see the Colt slowly being pushed off to the side. Because the new owners wanted to push something else. Um, 1969. Not sure if they used a the little decal like you see right here as they did in 68. I've never seen anything in the catalog with it. I don't know if they stopped it and the catalog just carried over the pictures from 68 because you can see the two pages are almost identical. Um, there's no mention in the catalog for left hand bows being special ordered. And this is the first year that they mention the use of signal bows for bows with blemishes. 1969. The Colt is now marketed as a Pearson Power Tournament Bow. This is the first year of the new ownership and you can see the change in direction. The arrow shelf is now listed as by radio. The wood is still called Solid Imported Ola. It is now offered in camouflage for an extra $5 and it costs $45. Now the big thing in the bows this year with a new company, before all Ben Pearson bows had an unlimited one year warranty. But now, with the new company, all bows now have a lifetime warranty. Blemish bows. What do you do with them? You know, they got a flaw, something didn't come out right. What do you do with them? How can you tell if your bow is a blemish? Well, it's not that hard with Ben Pearson's. Um, if it's pre-69, they called them apex bows, and you'll find a few of them out there. From 69 to 72, they're called signal laminated bows. After 72, I'm not too sure what they did. But let's have some fun and listen to the propaganda that they put out. I love old school marketing. Signal laminated bows. Strict quality control requires thorough inspection of every laminated bow before it receives the Ben Pearson label. Whenever a bow with a visual imperfection is discovered, which in no way affects the strength or shooting performance, the bow is separated and labeled with a star on the limb below the bow's name. Be like right down here, be a little star, right? Sense signal bows are in every other way top quality Ben Pearson bows. They are fully guaranteed by the liberal Ben Pearson laminated bow warranty. When available, these bows are offered at dealers at special prices. 
So there you have it. That's how they dealt with it. I'm going to show you some pictures of different signal ones and a few apex bows. Nineteen seventy. We're back to the economy theme of marketing, in which the catalog states everybody can have what it takes to enjoy great moments of archery. The wood, they still say it's solid imported Ola, although the picture again shows one with multiple laminations. The seventy seventy is still the regular model, but now they added a couple new ones. The seven nine zero two. It's the model number for Bose painted camouflage and the 7580, which is the Colt hunting and field set, which is part of the Pearson Power laminated bow sets. What you get for that? You get two match cedar field arrows, bow quiver, a glove, arm guard, string silencer, a tock knox knocking point, full colored animal target, and Ben Pearson's booklet, Secrets to Successful Bow Hunting. There's no price listed in the catalog, but they do add this little tidbit. Um, the catalog now states that white limbs are for target shooting and brown limbs are for hunting. 1971. The bows are now marketed as all-purpose bows. And you can see if you look through the catalogs, they're slowly but surely being pushed farther and farther back. But they had to sell so well that they didn't want to get rid of them. But they, they weren't bows that they were promoting. Again, the woods listed as Solidola. The model number has now been modified. They put a dash zero at the end of 7070. So that's your basic model. But they also offer the 7902-0, which is the camouflaged model. Um, there is no more kit models listed. The draw length, and they list it. This is pretty neat. They changed how they worded it. Before it was just draw length 26 to 30. Now it says draw length for perfect performance is 26 to 30 inches. And the catalog goes back to the old way of the limbs before they switched it over. Target shooting's white, hunting's brown. Nope, they went back to white limbs for under 40 and brown limbs for over 40. Who knows? So a fun fact in this one is the catalog now claims that the bow with its extra length and stabilizer design gives the coat more stability and smoothness than any bow in its price range. Nineteen seventy two Ben Pearson sold again. Now I'm not sure if they're sold or they're bought out. 1972, the Leisure Group either sold or got bought out by Brunswick Corporation in late 72. Um, some models were carryovers, but some were made or were never in the catalogs, like the Spectre. They're transitional models, and they were made in the 72-73 timeline. Brunswick, who you should know also as AMF, is a large international company, and they were hoping to take Ben Pearson to even greater heights. 1972. The only change is the model number 7902-0. The camouflage bow has been dropped. Besides that, nothing has changed in the catalog. 1972. Serial numbers. Everybody wants to know about serial numbers. You know, do they mean anything? Anything like that. What I can tell, serial numbers mean nothing. Right? There's no rhyme or reason to them. I have three bows, all from the same year, and there's like a 20,000 number difference between them. A um, couple things that are right is the 707 series, the first two digits of the serial number was the model number 07. And then in 74 and 75, they added letters to it. So, you know, I've found nothing to tell me anything. I thought I found a pattern, but then I found other bows. And I run through some pictures here and show you 
just the insanity of Ben Pearson's serial numbers. Nineteen seventy three. The bow is now marketed as a Sportster laminated bow. The arrow rest was dropped and has now been replaced by just a carpet rest. The wood is now called Select Hardwood. The interesting thing is this is the first time in the catalogs that they actually call it an AMO length. Before it's just sixty two inches. Now the catalog listed is sixty two inch AMO. Um, they started bringing out a whole bunch of new bows, changing everything, and the coat was pushed way to the back of the catalog. And another interesting part is they changed the fiberglass. It's still white for under 40, but in the bows over 40 pounds, the fiberglass is now black instead of the usual brown. How do you date your Ben Pearson bow? You know, that's what people ask me a lot, like I'm some expert, I'm not, but I do know more than probably the average person. Um, there's no real way to date it, but I did find a way. Um, it's the logo. Ben Pearson's logo was changed pretty much every two years for the most part. And when I'm done babbling, I'm gonna show you a picture so you can copy it and break it down. Or you can write me and I'll send you the, um, the JPEG file so you can have it on yourself. Um, the logo changed about every two years. Uh, the same logo was used from 58 to 65. All right, so that's a long time, seven years. So those are really hard to date, but there's other ways to do it. During that time, they also changed model numbers a lot, so that's one way to do it. 66 and 67 had the same logo as 65, but the arrow did not go through the name. 68 and 69, they went to a whole different logo, all right? with a different arrow point and things like that. And the old ones look like this, 68, 69, they went vertical. And then 1970, they changed the logo and that vertical, they put a solid block on it. And you're gonna see the others. But that's the best way you can date your bows to a two year period by using the logos. In 1975, the Colt is back for its swan song, it looks like. It's part of the Sportster laminated bow page with all the other older bows like the Cougar and All-American, the Collegian, and all that stuff. The wood is a select hard wood. The draw limit is now listed as unlimited, but it doesn't have a brace height change. You know, for the final year of the bow, they, they put a lot of work in this. They changed a lot of things. Um, the Colt's in the 30 to 35 pound range got a what they call a flex rest while bows in the 40 to 55 pound range got a carpet rest bows in the 30 to 35 pound range got white pearsonite glass otherwise known as fiberglass and the bows in the 40 to 55 pound bow range gets black fiberglass now the catalog doesn't show it but this somebody put a sticker on there and the cost for the bow is 52 dollars now here's a fun fact. In 1975, they came up with this thing called the Chroma Code packaging. And this is what they tell you about it. The Chroma Code ensures instant recognition as a set of genuine Ben Pearson and classifies it as either target or a hunting set. Orange means it's a target set and green packaging means it's for hunting. All right, boys and girls, here's the model Colts. You've seen them all. There's one left. 
It's one I can't figure out. It's the mystery Colt. I found it a while back on eBay. I bid on it. I wasn't going to pay too much for it. It does not look like any Colt before. Um, using the pictures, which I'll show you as I talk, and I'll blow them up when I'm done. I used the, the logo. I can tell it's between 70 and 75. Just didn't look right. So doing a little bit more research using the catalogs and things like that, I got it down to a 70 to 72. And I'm looking at the shapes of bows and things like that in the catalog, and I found three possible candidates for what it really is. The first one's the Mercury Hunter. The second is the Predator, and the third one is the Sierra Stalker. Now, although these look like it, it can't be them. On the bow, which you'll see here, it says 62 inch Colt. But the Mercury Hunter is 60 inches. The Predator is 58, and the Sierra is another 60. Now here's the part that throws you all off. In 1973, they came out with all new models and did away with all those others. So I have no clue. You know, I wouldn't pay the money that I finally went for, but that's a good one. That's a real rarity. I have no clue why that was made, but it's out there. It's the mystery cult. Hey, everybody. All right. History of the Ben. Incomplete history of the Ben Pearson Colt. How about that? I love this bow. You know that. Um, first bow I ever shot. So there is that, uh, you know, I, I got that attachment to it, sen sentimental attachment to it. But even after that, this is my first lefty I got of it, and I love it. One, I just love the Brazilian rosewood. It's only 38 pounds, which is great. You know what? This is good for all day shooting. It's got enough oomph. Just enough power to get my arrows out there. It's easy to draw and hold all day. Um, it's heavy. Like I said, that rosewood's really heavy. So that has its own little benefit. This is my, I'd call it number two. But my favorite bow, and this is of any bow, even my Stealth Hunter, is this one right here. This is 48 pounds, uh, 50 at my draw length. But this is the only bow that I shot right off the bat and instantly I was hitting where I wanted no adjustments no nothing all right she'll shoot all types of I shot 600s out of this 800s out of it 400s out of it all different arrows and she shoots them all well you know this is my instinctive shooting bow because it just goes where I look my stealth hunter is awesome but I had to work at setting up my stealth hunter to get it to shoot how I want I did nothing on this this is the string you can see yeah, it's getting nasty and ratty I just slapped it on there. It was a leftover string. Slapped it on the first time I shot it. You seen the video when I restored it. I'm like, wow, that's that, that's pretty quiet and smooth. And it just picked me up. And you can see I use it so much. Look at all the gunk on there. Yeah, I got to clean it up. But you know, this is the bow. If you had me put to a, a polygraph, or you made me put my life on the line, or bet a thousand dollars, or whatever, I'd I'd pull this bow out. Because that's how much faith I have in it. You know, so Ben Pearson bows, where can you get them? Everywhere. Pawn shops, yard sales, classifieds. Yes, it's a gamble. 67. Right, 53 years old, still going strong. Um, good price for them? Depends on what you want to pay. I'd say around $150 on eBay. You know, give or take 20, 30. That'd be fair. All right. So there you have it, the incomplete history, probably the best you'll find on the internet, of the Ben Pearson coat. I think they're great bows, highly underrated. All right, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you next time with an all-new episode, 3D Archery.